Welcome to this episode of The Couch. My name is Adam Ellison. And I'm Dave Nepper. And we're here to talk to you about video games, of course. Now, for this episode, we're going to concentrate on a specific type of game, and that is, of course, co-op, a game where you can actually play together on the couch. We're kind of fans of couches here, so We've, that makes yes, sense. Yes, if you've noticed. We like couches. <laughs> um, this type of genre is one that I'm sure everyone's aware of is slowly leaving. Um, online tends to be outweighing co-op these days. Uh, but there have been a few games that have come out in recent months uh, this past year that uh, definitely caught our attentions. Um, we're glad to see that they are still coming out, of course. Um, Nintendo being a big supporter of this still. Uh, but some of the games that we're going to touch upon vary through all systems. Of course, computer mm -hmm. is kind of hard to co-op on, so we probably won't be touching any P uh, CPU titles this time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we're going to start off with um, a uh, IP that's stretched across a lot of different stories, I would say, and that is Lego. Um, even some of their original stories have come into be video games. Yeah. Uh, but some of them that we've played that really caught our attentions, uh, Dave, what's one that really, that you loved? The Lego series, I mean, pretty much any Lego game that has come out has been a great co-op experience. Yes. Multiple controllers, same couch, those, those key elements that we're looking for in this, in this environment. And the latest one, of course, is the Lego, the movie, the video game. Everything is awesome. Yes. Yeah, that's the whole theme. And it's a great little co-op uh, game for you and a friend to play uh, all together. So, I mean, all the, the Lego games have been really enjoyable. The, uh, I've played through the Star Wars games, the uh, Indiana Jones games, the Batman. That one's one of, one of my favorites. And so Lego's a great co-op game that you can get into, play with a friend, and there's a lot to choose from. You can kind of just pick your, your world, mm -hmm. jump in, and play together with a friend. And of course, really? it's age-friendly. So yes. kids can play with parents, and yep. all ages can enjoy it. Yep. Um, yeah, on top of their original, uh, like Lego Movie, which is their original story, um, mm -hmm. they've done like Dave mentioned other stories like Star Wars, DC Comics, mm -hmm. Marvel Comics, all sorts of fun stuff. Star yeah. Wars. So that's one that, that we've noticed throughout the years actually, because it's been going for a while. Yeah. That's stayed prominent to the co-op genre, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, one of the more recent ones to come out uh, would be the new Super Mario 3D Land. Mm -hmm. um, of course, on the Nintendo Wii U, looks gorgeous, Mario. Uh, and like I said, Nintendo's definitely one company that is trying to keep the household name to video games. They want to keep it all friendly, interactive, and this is a great game just to enjoy. Again, age-friendly. Anyone can hop in and have fun. If you're a fan of Mario, it's, you're going to love it. Four players, uh, fun romp through all different colorful worlds collecting stars and gold coins and all that fun stuff. Uh, it can be a little, it can be cooperative where you are working with friends. Friends can be a little annoying and just try to mess you up sometimes, but it's definitely a fun game to check out. Mario in HD, I mean, I, I, I don't need to say any more about that. It's gorgeous. It's a lot of fun. Um, Another game we talked about uh, mm -hmm. that came out a while ago, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's come out over a couple of different platforms and yes. different iterations. And this is actually one that is on the CPU, if I remember correctly. Yeah, uh, yep, it's on PC. Mm -hmm. uh, Xbox Live Arcade, you can get it yes. in the arcade. I believe it's available on PS3 as well. Mm -hmm. But that game is Dungeon Defenders. And yes. it's a great little tower defense style with some yeah. third person fighting. Uh, game that you can play. I play it with my son regularly. We really enjoy playing together. Yeah, I, I got it on the Xbox Live Arcade when I tried it out. Um, of course, I didn't play co-op on the couch. I did play online. It does support both features uh, that I know on most of the mm -hmm. platforms. Um, yes, it's a tower defense game from a different perspective, third person. Uh, you set up traps to uh, mess up the waves of enemies coming at yep, you. you different waves coming in. Different characters you can be. Mage, warrior... Yes. Rogue or ra archer of some sort, yep. I believe. There's some range stuff, mm -hmm. some close proximity stuff. Yeah, it's just a fun game, uh, yeah. Tower Defense. If you like those sort of games, check it out. It's again, a different type of take on it. Pretty kid-friendly. Yes. I mean, I play with my 10-year-old son, and it's a great you know, family co-op game. That's another thing I've noticed with co-op games in recent days, is they all tend to be child-friendly, uh, or age-friendly, I should say. That is one thing I have noticed. Mm -hmm. um, probably try to keep it all together. Parents and kids can bond over these games and stuff like that. 
Um, but one that recently came out uh, that caught my attention right away. Um, as soon as I played it, I, I could not put it down. And that is Child of Light. And what's odd about this one is this is actually an RPG that's cooperative because you have the main heroine and the your other partner is like this tiny little glowing fairy. Literally, you're a tiny little glowing dot with a happy face on it. <laughs> and the other, you get the one player can actually control both of these if they want to. If another one of friend hops in, they can take control of the fairy. And the fairy, what they, what that character does is in battle, you actually have some purpose. You can slow down enemies, uh, interact with their timing and stuff like that. So your friends can actually have more time to get more attacks. Um, but while you're exploring the world, going through it, um, the fairy can get out of reach treasure chests, um, blind enemies, so you can get the uh, first attack in on battle, stuff like that. May not be the biggest playing into uh, of a co-op partner, but there is some flair to it, and it does add to it. I think one, what's unique about Child of Light is the ability for the second player to jump in very, very easily. Yes. The part of the little fairy is is very simple to control. So if you've got someone you want to play a game with that isn't very comfortable with video games yet, this is a great game to do that. On top of that, the game is gorgeous. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things we can say that makes it a fantastic game. I personally can spend hours on it. It's gorgeous. The soundtrack's amazing. The writing. If you're at all a fan of childhood fairy tales in some fashion, you will find something in this game that you absolutely enjoy. Mm -hmm. The background is all hand-painted, hand-drawn. It's actually, at times, alive. Uh, you'll see things moving in the background, like it was a book, like a pop-up book almost. It's, I can, I can gush on it. It's a great game, <laughs> absolutely amazing game. Yeah. Check it out. Um, but we're, we will move on to other titles. Uh, this one recently came out as well. Mm -hmm. um, I would say... I think this is another case in point of a game that makes good transitions. Yes. I'm all about games that kind of grow. When you're playing with somebody else, there's usually someone who's maybe more advanced at a game or more familiar with a game and, you, and you're trying to introduce some elements to another. This is Plants vs. Zombies Garden mm -hmm. Warfare. And this game, I got this game and I play it with my son and we have so much fun and I really enjoy it because it introduces him to some multiplayer dynamics uh, yes. that you would see in, in one of the big shooters, but I'm not gonna let my 10 year old son do that. This is a great, fun, plant versus zombie based uh, game. And it's got some kind of tower defense type elements to it as well. Yeah, you yeah, plant, so. plant plants in pots and have them defend your base. Yep. And, uh, but it's a great co-op game. You can play split screen on Xbox One. Yes. And uh, I believe PC is coming soon. Oh, that's good to hear. And again, another one, of those, another game that supports co-op and single player online. Yep. Um, definitely fun for your first person shooter fan. It has its own Plans for Zombies flair. Uh, I'm a big fan of it as well. You can either play as both zombies and plants. Mm -hmm. As you play the game in the rounds, you gain coins, currency. You can buy packs. Yep, buy packs. card packs. And exactly. You get great. new plants. You can get new characters, new weapons. It's a lot of fun. Yep. Great time. And mm -hmm. then, of course, the last one we're going to talk about is one that recently, recently came out. It's made a lot of headway, especially for Nintendo that's been on a slump lately. And that is, of course, Mario Kart 8. Mm. Yes, <laughs> this game everyone knows and loves from different generations of mm. gaming, from Super Nintendo where it first came on the scene, handhelds, GameCube, you name it. Mm. Now it's on the Wii U, HD Mario Kart, gorgeous, uh, of course. Um, I mean, if you've played Mario Kart, there's nothing I can really say that would <laughs> sell you on getting the game. It's Mario Kart. You're going to want it. You if you haven't you played the game, <laughs> pick it up. It's just fun. Um, again, this is a game that does support co-op and now online, which is sort of new territory for mm -hmm. the Wii U, which I'm very excited to see. Yeah. Uh, the thing, I mean, it is Mario Kart, which all on its own pedestal is an amazing thing. But the thing that made this one even more special to me is... I recently found a list online of all the little, 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 little winks and details they put into this game. Mm. Um, an example one that just pops in my head, the details are slightly escaping me, but there was a poster of a shy guy of like this oil company, sort of uh, reminiscing of an old uh, advertisement for an oil company. It says, shy guy, exclusive, established, I forgot the year, I want to say 1981, but anyway, the year is an important thing because that is the first time a shy guy 
ever showed up in a Mario game. Uh -huh. So it's these small little winks that they do to the entire Mario franchise in this game while you're zipping past and having fun with your friends just makes it even more special. Mm -hmm. See, if you're a big Mario fan, Nintendo fan, it's just, it's awesome. It's a lot of fun, <laughs> gorgeous. I can't sell this game anymore. The, another great feature about this, I will say, like they have done in recent installments, is they go back to great courses in recent Mario Karts and they revamp them for the new current age. We obviously redid graphics, redid courses, styles, and stuff like that. It's great. I'm one of my favorites. Uh, Toad's Highway from Nintendo 64 is back. Nice. Uh, a new feature they added into that, which well, I'll explain is the things that they added. Uh, some of the cars, instead of just running into them and exploding and dying, as some of us may remember in N64, some of these actually now serve as like ramps where you can actually shoot off of. Um, you can actually interact with some of these cars to help you get further in the game. So. Think of that on top of some other classic courses that you'll like and see again, and you'll get the feeling. It's great. A lot Sounds of fun. Like fun. Yeah. So these are just some of the games that came to our head mm -hmm. when we were discussing co-op randomly. And uh, I'm sure there are others I'm sure there are. that we are forgetting. If you've played a co-op game in recent days that we didn't even mention here, maybe ones we don't even know exist, uh -huh. let us know. Uh, we'll be happy to test Drop them out. Comment. Yeah, let you know what we thought about them. So yeah, this has been another episode of The Couch. Hope you guys had fun listening to us ramble on about games. And uh, we'll be here again very soon, bringing you another episode and another topic. So keep on gaming, guys. Yeah. <laughs>